Hello. Welcome back to the Exiled Outcast. Exiled uh, Entertainment. Whatever. You know what? This. You know what? We're going to be reviewing Bo is Afraid. And yes. the only thing I'm afraid of is ever listening to you for a recommendation on a movie again. Oh, come on. This is Ari Aster, it's Ari Aster's magnum opus. Mind you, this is the one, this is the director that I remember. I don't know if you remember, but the Hangman Outcast episode 10, when I, I don't think you were around back I then. I was not around back in episode 10. Yeah, it was me and Jerome debating over Midsommar and Hereditary due to, because he hated those two movies and I love both movies. You, my friend, are by far one of like the great theatrical minds that I've ever met, and that is high praise. I've had wonderful conversations, enthralling conversations with people about film theory and the ideology of putting together a beginning, middle, and end. You know, the i the 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 hero's quest is basically what they try to say this movie is when looking at reviews on it. This movie was dog shit. And 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 it, it brings a tear to my eye. Even 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 before we went live, even the the one person I thought maybe would have my back just a slight turned on me. Y'all no, turned you know, on me. You know, you know, this movie has one good thing: Parker Posey's ass. Like I said before we started, that's the only thing about this movie that I don't like. Nothing on Charlie's side. It hurts my heart. Ugh. But this was terrible. I love you, Charlie. But holy shit. <laughs> so you know what? I, 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 even, I even I even advised Dan. I said, "Watch it with trips. I want. I just want to see like the 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 overall like opinion of this because I was like, because this movie, I will admit, this movie has gotten a very divisive opinion over. It. Some people call it a masterpiece. Other people call it like what Dan said. I have taken better masterpieces in the bathroom. <laughs> After watching worse movie, horrible movies than this movie. Oh, shit. Wait till we get into uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood, and Honey. Well, we that, that, that. But that one, I think both of us will be in agreement of. Okay, so, you know, I usually take lead on talking about the beginning of the film or asking you where to go. You know what? You tell me. I want to do something different if you're okay with that. You convince me from the beginning to where we go. I'll, and I'm pretty sure I'll find some things I liked about the movie. Well, I'll say this. I liked uh, the birthday boy stabbing guy. Oh, yes. <laughs> but tell me what it was your experience of watching Bo's Afraid and tell me where you what you liked about the beginning. Well, to, well, to start it off, uh, a lot of people even going back to my Hangman Charlie days know, knows I'm a big fan of A24 and also a big fan of Ari Aster. Ari Aster has made some of the best horror films of the last uh, probably decade plus with movies what's like Hereditary. What do you call this genre of movie? You call this a horror movie? It's it's a weird, like I'll say this, it's a weird movie to to put in a, in a single, in the singular genre because I've heard people call it a black comedy. I've heard people call it a horror film. Ari Aster has even said that he he wanted to make a black comedy, which again has some funny moments in it, at least for me. No, and again, there, I will say there was moments, but I don't figure it ever got off the blocks. It never really decided what kind of movie it wanted to be. I could tell you right now, if he would have been this character figuring out being like basically the the premise, and, and I guess you could one of the biggest flaws that I have, and I think you could agree with this. Is trying to overanalyze something, anything, right? And I did that with this movie because it's how, how I watch movies. And if they would have just made it a movie about a guy who was afraid to go outside, basically, and his only safe space was his, was his house, and then all of a sudden, you know, he, the key incident happens, and then everyone, you know, his house, his, his safe space is invaded, and him dealing with that and going on from there as a movie, they're not that, like that first beginning. It, sp- Spot before the whole getting hit by the car and stabby McStabby, I could have been like, okay, we're on to the races. We can watch this journey of this guy who's pretty pathetic. Let's be honest, Bo is pretty pathetic in the movie. Um, I could have been on board with that. Or cut to the second act, I could have been all about, oh, if it was a movie about a guy who got in a wreck and his uh, him trying to fight his way out to get away from this fucked up family 
and everything he's doing to get ultimate to his mom, then I could have been on board with that. Or, fuck, even go to the third act, that late in the movie, going and saying, it's a story about a man overcoming the tyranny of his own mother to become strong and better himself. Three different concepts, all on board. But this movie never decided what the fuck it wanted to be. No, hell, even th- there was glimpses of hope even in the forest with the fucking play and the flower people and them. I love the beauty of that. It reminded me of Robin Williams in that movie where he was in a painting. I can't remember the fucking name of it. What Dreams May Come. What Dreams May Come. There was elements there for that. But it and didn't- it's funny because people didn't like, like, that was one of the biggest critiques was that whole forest scene. I loved that part. I loved that ideology. And then Big Doofus had to come in and ruin it. Fucking Commando <laughs> Cletus. <laughs> and, like, the movie never decided what it wanted to be. It, you, some people, were like, in, in reviews I saw, were trying to compare it to the Odyssey. Nothing can compare to Homer's tale of Odysseus, which we talked about that recently. But fuck that. You're not going to sit here and try to say this is an Odyssey. This was a fucking... This was a fucking vomit session where people throwing darts at a fucking board trying to figure out what kind of movie they wanted to make because just because you have Joaquin Phoenix who is an incredible actor and I will not deny that his portrayal of this character he played the character well I'm not gonna I, I felt that he was Bo but just because you have Joaquin Phoenix and and all these actors doesn't mean that you need to fucking you just throw them together and not have any fucking direction the best way I could describe this movie, and, and a few other people have said this, uh, you kind of hit the nail on the head with the, the frantic nature of everything. Uh, how I looked at the movie, it, it's a, an anxiety trip. And it's a, it's a dive, a deep dive into one's anxiety. Because going through frantic situations from one thing to another, getting hit by a car to being basically with this weird family to, to being in the play to the shit that happens with his uh, mother and Parker Posey at the end and something else we'll discuss later on. Uh, the funniest part, I was, side note, was was the messages I began. I was actually, and this is on Wednesday, but we're recording this Sunday. I was on um, Chill with Jordy what, and talking to him, and I'm seeing just, the fuck is this movie? <laughs> I think that was worth the the whole situation just in general. But but no, 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 tell them the other one too. Giant dick monster. Oh yeah, giant penis monster. What the fuck? Has, that has okay. This movie is not okay. You can't tell me this movie is based in reality. You can't tell me this movie is based on a fever dream. You can't move, tell me this movie is based in his own mind. This is fucking stupid. It was based. I don't like you said. It was a Kafka Kafka s storyline it was a Kavorkian. it's a every Kav- possible thing that could go wrong in a period i'm of pretty sense. sure that's a bad fucking trip if my fucking dad turns out i mean you know, anxiety you know like the anxiety aspect of it what does a giant penis monster have to do with anxiety how was that written yet? well as someone who has gone through anxiety myself and i do that i have as well we like uh they, they're like little things could be big things for example are you trying to make a euphemism for your dick? No. Why is that? Well, see, see, for once, I'm not trying to make it anything sexual. And see, you're you, see, either I've warped your mind or you you've warped mine, and then it's just you, it's like you're the puppet master holding the strings. <laughs> the silence. I'm, I'm like the only thing that's making me happy at this point because that ruined three hours of my day off. Is this snow cone? A snow cone? Where'd you get a snow cone? Pelican Snowballs. Huh? It's a place called Pelican Snowballs, world, world's best snow cones. Ah, there used to be a snow cone place uh, where I used to live. My grandfather and I used to go buy it. Every Watch day. this. We're so, the movie's so bad, we're talking about snow cones. <laughs> hey, I don't agree with that, but you know. <laughs> we were more interested in the snow cone than bringing me back to the movie. You brought up the snow cone. And you continued down the line of the snow cone. I was curious because it was just so random. Ah, just what? like the movie Bo is afraid. I was just about to say. I was just about to say. <laughs> Tell, okay, you know what? I'm shitting on this movie, and I love Joaquin Phoenix. 
his portrayal of fucking Commodus in Gladiator made me fall in love with him and hate his guts at the same time. His role as Johnny Cash in Walk the Line made me fucking fall in love with Johnny Cash all over again. My my introduction to Joaquin actually was because uh, I didn't see Gladiator till later on. Same with Walk the Line. Okay, well, um, then a movie that's closer to both, both you and my heart. He can play mental illness perfectly. Case in point, The Joker. Yes. But my introduction to him was fucking signs. And I thought his reaction when the alien was great. That little scene that to me, that was probably the scariest scene in the movie was that one scene where they show the news scene where the alien pops out and then he has a reaction to it. I thought that was great. Then what the fuck is this? Tell you know what? Make me understand why you like the movie. Start from the beginning. Let's, let's go that route. So like going back to the Ari Aster aspect, like I, I, at first, I'm expecting because this movie also had a different different title before it had the title "Bo is Afraid." It was called "Disappointments Boulevard." That, and, should, that should be on your ticket when you buy the fucking thing to view it. <laughs> like so, I I and, and I'll talk about my movie experience going into it. Like a lot of places didn't have this movie in theaters. Good on good on them. Like even the place I work at, they only had it one for one day. And it was a day, I, even if I wanted to see it, I already seen it, but it was a day I worked. So I literally had to go to the Alamo Draft House. Like, I, I haven't been there since seeing Mandy for the first time in theaters with Nicolas Cage. It seemed like your movie theater had the right idea. Uh, like, I went, I went, like, uh, uh, took, uh, like, I bought the ticket in advance, was so excited because, again, I'm a big Ari Aster fan. Saw the trailer for this movie, of course. The trailer is better than the movie. But keep going. The trait like the trailer again, I was kind of confused because again, it wasn't what I'm used to seeing from Ari Aster, where it's like these horror aspects with like it had some sense of, sense of it in the trailer, but it wasn't like the focal point. So I was like, okay, okay this is gonna be different from what Ari Aster's done previously. I'm, I'm gonna apologize and I keep cutting you off, and that's not my nature. And I'm sorry, but this movie really touched a nerve. I'll put it this, this way. This, trips. Oh, go ahead. Trips. See, I say trips and you let me say it. Trips fucking saw something on TikTok and she was like, oh, I saw the scene from this movie. I'm kind of curious. The phone call to his mother the, phone, the UPS guy. That's what I saw. On the phone, yeah, the phone call from the UPS guy. And you know, I will say this. The actress playing his mother was wonderful. I think she did a fantastic job. The acting was great. I can't deny the super... And I'll go back to what I said earlier. Nathan Lane was phenomenal. The Just because you have these actors... And actresses, and fuck you, motherfuckers, in the strike, man. Fucking give these writers what they need, so we can get back to fucking good movies, not this shit. Anyway, <laughs> they, this is, this is why I wanted to do this, like, right? Because I was like, this will be perfect because this the, is basically a reaction. The, the they did a fucking amazing job playing their characters. Even the fucking UPS man being, you know, a shocked about what he said because it's like. And the twist with that was fucked up about his mom. Anyway, but just fucking three hours waiting for something. And I get penis monster. I, and I'm not kidding, people. When you watch this, penis monster. That, that, that scene was like the fucking... I've I've said this like this like because I I've said this when I did my re my reaction slash review on TikTok I did I did this literally right when it came out. And my reaction I said it was probably is my favorite movie of the year, but it's a movie I may never watch again. I like watched it last night before I watched Twisted Metal finally, so I could so I could get like a a, a fresh a fresh because I hadn't seen it since the theater. And no pun intended, I was kind of afraid to go back and watch it. Just I wonder why. And, and it was just because, like, I there, there was another movie that I could compare it to called The Night House that came out a few years ago. Um, it was a woman dealing with the, the loss of her husband with some weird stuff going on. And that that movie fucked me up for a while. Like, I, I, I have it on blue. For example, I have it on Blu-ray. I have not opened it since I've. Um, I think the reason why I opened it recently was to um, do an unboxing for it. But that movie fucked me up. Was there a penis and, monster in that? No, no. It was like that. That was more like to me. That was like more of um, the theme of that movie was more of depression and guilt and 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 like not knowing 
like uh, the person that you share a bed with, and not knowing the person that you spend years with, and all that. That that was that was something. That's another I, like I, I may one day want to visit, revisit. Just give me an excuse to watch it again. Um, but uh, but like those two movies, I compare them because of the fact that they're now Nighthouse wasn't as long as this movie, but it was movies I loved, and I think they're they're great works of art in their own genres, but they're movies that just fucked with me. And this one, because of the anxiety, because of just the the torture that basically was going on throughout the each each part of the movie. Just and again the, the simple premise of the movie is he's trying to get to his mom. That that's that's basically the be- best way I could describe at least the premise of this movie. Besides so the other shit that goes on in the There's in, so in, many ways that this could have been to me an Oscar worthy film. There's so many ways that you could have gone. Like the love story between him and Elaine and ultimately him having the realization after they come together. Even what the fuck was that? I was waiting till that's what the fuck. Literally, like again, when I went into this theater, there's probably like there was there was a decent amount. It wasn't like half full, but it was like a quarter full. Um, and and it wasn't. It's been, it was in that theater for a couple of days previously. But uh, the reaction of people that were that were watching it was just great because and and, and I'm literally sitting there like whispering out. Because when she fucking yeah, and then and then of course that when the penis monster came up, there was actually you a big heard to the penis monster. Is that what we're supposed to assume? The father? No. When they came in and they took her away, did they feed her to the penis monster? That 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 could be uh, the idea from it. Yeah. Because I, I think I believe she said feed it to Henry or whoever the fuck I don't know whoever the fuck Henry is. I believe Henry's the father. Which will see the penis monster. Now, now we have a bigger question: How in the fuck did did that get into her vag like that? And then how is she not? Well, she alive? was a massive cunt, so I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I was, I was like, that's the real question we should be asking here. Instead of instead of what the fuck about this, that, and the third? How in the fuck did they did they even have Bo? I'm still waiting for you to convince me of this why this movie was good. Well, I'm probably going to have a hard time because, again, it's it's a very difficult film to... I've already talked about the anxiety aspect of it. I, I get that, you know, and I, I get that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an ode to the idea of being somebody with anxiety. I 100% understand that. My only Because look at it from this point of view. Really, everything was kind of semi-normal, as normal as can be in Bo's world, until the whole thing with the mother. If you're, if you're going into this... Thinking that this is the real world, you're 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 oh yeah yeah you're yeah. doing yourself. But they don't acknowledge that. They want you to believe from the okay. My belief is that when you go into a movie, whether you're older, younger, of a theological mind, of a you're a fucking complete moron, whatever it may be, you should be able to appreciate art for what it is. Right? There should be some ground rules in creating art. Agreed. This was the equivalent to Hunter Biden's blow art, where he stuck paint in his mouth and blew it on a fucking canvas and said, oh, it's done, it's art. There was no care or effort taken to a real concisive story. And ultimately, you're not, you're you're leaving everyone with a disservice because you're not telling anybody shit. It's just a hodgepodge of really good ideas but nothing concrete. There should have been nods to the audience or some sort of fourth wall breaking to show us what's real and what's not. Like you see him, but you see the daughter go off for school and grab two bottles of pills, like she's grabbing her books to go out the door. Or there's no nod to us of what it really was. Or if it was really a sanitarium he was in that he created for himself mentally. Like there was just nothing to give us a clue. Oh, okay. This is how he's seeing it, but here's how it really is. That would have been uber helpful, and I think would have carried it further. I also think, but it no, take you out of the movie. But I also think. think that it wasn't that it was. This was his world. This was real. All that stuff was happening. But but it wasn't. But it was. 
and that's what makes it bad because there's it's there you should, think that girl drank paint? I think that girl drank paint. Oh, no. I, I think all that shit paint. happened. I think that his mom was in control of almost everything. I think the only person that was kind of good to him was the wife who was trying to warn him and say, "Hey, just admit to what, that's what she meant. Just admit your 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 fucking guilt to this. Admit to what though? That he, he was a bad son. Oh my gosh, I don't think so. I don't either. But no, she, I don't think that was the moral of the story. I don't think that was. I don't know. I love this three way back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> but uh, well, I was gonna say like regarding. Like I, I could see maybe okay to go with your your flaw for a moment. Maybe I like because this, this is another thing people have been saying about like this regarding RES or this movie. Uh, is that like it was self indulgent to him and all that? Like it could be it could be sh- like a valid criticism that that he wanted he just threw everything out there and wanted you to basically speculate what was going on. Like kind of like figure out or have your own interpretation of it instead of just feeding you everything. Now, now, granted, I, I'm more in favor to things being more open for interpretation than I am just like fed spoon fed to you. Yeah, but there are times where you need to get something like have a little piece given to you from time to time to keep you going. So I could understand that criticism from that point of view. Okay. Okay, I am a fan of the video game series Dark Souls. That is the most ambiguous game series of all time. There's a lot of having to find the lore for yourself in that. 100%. I'm all about that life. This was not that. This was a fucking... This um, this director or this writer was on fucking meth. And decided, <laughs> I was going to say this is an acid trip, but yeah. This motherfucker decided, hey, I like what dreams may come. Hey, I like that one movie. Let's do some of that. You know, fucking, you know what? Let's throw a smoking man dressed up as a butterfly with pajamas who keeps a gun inside of a horn. Let's- yeah. it, it was also written by R.F. It was directed and, and written. And add, add a splash of the Truman Show to it. It was just... I can't find, other than the acting, because they're, they're, they had an all-star cast, one redeeming... This is almost worse than The Room. Fuck you, The Room's a classic. Don't you yeah, 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 The Room's a classic. One day we should talk about that. The, the, the story of The Room was better than this. I was, okay, trip's back on my side now. Okay, there we go. And I've only seen parts of The Room. Uh, oh, you got to watch it. Like, uh, well, that's going to be another movie we're going to have to do. Maybe, maybe in a few, like, uh, sometime later on. Because, yeah. I actually, what, one of my... Uh, well, I would call them former friends. Now we we were big fans of the room, right? And I begged him for years. Let's do a like we had a whole we had a whole fucking plan. I told him I said let's do the let's do a review, but let's also during certain scenes let's recreate the scenes like with, with <laughs> us doing it. I had this whole plan. Like I thought, fuck, make it like we don't need to worry about doing camera work or anything because this movie looks cheap as all hell. So let's make it. Like we'd be like, okay, let's talk. Let's we're gonna talk about the roo- the rooftop scene, and then we cut to a scene of us recreating the roof uh, the rooftop scene, and then we talk about it afterwards. I like I had this whole idea, and he's like, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. Then we were arguing who was gonna be Tommy Wiseau and who was gonna be Greg, and we were like, or Mark, the Greg's the actor who plays uh, Mark, but like we were so we were arguing about who was gonna play who because I wanted to play uh, Tommy. He want or and Johnny, who Tommy was all played. Um, I wanted to play uh, Tom, like Johnny, and then we just went. Then it went nowhere. Uh, but I had this whole idea where we were gonna like, like, and it wasn't gonna be like we were gonna find a rooftop. But like I literally said, we'll we'll fucking film it outside of my fucking apartment and just do it there, or do a scene there, and then when we need to do the throw in the football, like we just find somewhere yeah, else. Football. And then we just do a. Uh, and then we just said, well, too bad, too bad it's on YouTube because we could try to do the belly, the, the sex with the belly button scene, but we, we would need somebody to partake in that with us. So we were just figuring out different things we could do and, and all that. But yeah, that was basically the idea of what we were going to do for that because I thought it would be hilarious just to put some extra work. It really is hilarious about all this. It really brings it off full circle. As again, we're talking about another movie and not about Bo's Afraid. <laughs> 
Damn it, Dan. We should have. Well, Dan, we should have. We should have. When you came, we should have waited till you came down here, and then we could have filmed certain scenes for Bo's Afraid here uh, elsewhere. No, you could have filmed me taking this shit. It would have been more entertaining in this movie. <laughs> We we get you we get you in a in a place that looks like an attic and we get an inflatable penis. <laughs> just well, your reaction of you walking in saying, "What the fuck did I just walk into?" Or no, we can get one of your buddies or get Lennon. We can get one of those inflatable penis costumes that Hangman Page or that fucking what does the name war against Hangman Page? And um, oh, and it says good morning, good evening, and good night. And you're like ah. Wow. Yeah, check out Lennon's Lennon's kitchen. He says that as you as you're running away. I Shit, just, that's what we're we're just just waited. Like, we, we waited. We're watching, and she we checked to see how much time was left in the movie, and it's like six minutes left. I'm like, okay, here it comes, big finale. <laughs> we're no. just ended ended with the with the what what was it the boat, the boat with the fucking boat. That's it. Like any criticism I have of this movie, I do feel like I that the runtime was could have been chopped down maybe twenty minutes. I could have been chopped down about three hours. <laughs> and then, and then, like the boat scene was probably the like I kind of call that the come down after the fucking fiasco in the third act with the with Parker Posey and the penis monster. <laughs> Oh, now, okay. I remember Parker, but oh. I forgot she was in Blade Trinity. And I, I, I loved her in that movie. I well, want you good. to think about what you just said. I thought it could have been better after the third act with Parker Posey and the penis monster. <laughs> I want no. you to think, did you ever think in life that you would say those words? No. Like, that's one thing I like. And, and some I want to add to this. This movie actually was A24's most... Um, the biggest budget it, it, it's ever had for A24. A24 usually does short, like very minimalistic budgets. This one, the budget for this movie was $35 million. Now, how much did they make back? Hey, I was about to say, um, it made $11.5 million. Oh, go figure. Hey, that's, 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 that's more than, than uh, fucking some other movies with that type of budget. It took a loss. That's Not as big of a loss as The Flash or Black Adam. <laughs> and I like The Flash. I have issues with that one. Again, like we're not even talking about the movie anymore because you got to talk about other movies. Because I was comparing movie. the budgets. Okay. But anyway, back to the back to the thing. Like, uh, could you imagine though? The side note: you actually paying to go see this in the theater? I would have killed you. <laughs> We were the, the Exile Entertainment would have stopped until I come down there, beat your ass, get the eleven fifty plus the twenty bucks or whatever more for whether it been food and condiments, and then I would have come back up and decided if we were going to do this show again. I think, yeah, I think my ticket was like ten, then the drink was like three, so it was like thirteen dollars altogether. Oh, we got paid for we go down there. We're gonna spoil you. We're going fucking full forward doing the whole fucking shebang. Bro, I love Booby Tavern. Shout out to Booby Tavern if you ever want to sponsor this show. I love the game day platter. The what? Movie Tavern with Marcus Films has a wonderful complimentary, well, not complimentary, wonderful meal called the Game Day Platter with four or five hot wings, three sliders, and a shit ton of chili cheese fries. The movie Tavern, I don't think I we have one here. What the fuck? We have Animal Draft House. Do they have food? Yeah. Then we'll go there. Yeah, there's one like like uh, and that's where I saw Bo is afraid, because again, so that's so how they got go. you with the food. Huh? That's how they got you to buy a ticket, the food. I didn't even order food that I was bro- I was broke that week. I just I just had the money I had I literally Save money from my last from the check previously so I could buy a ticket to go see this movie because I was so excited. Because again, Ari Aster, one of my favorite my favorite director going around today. Um going back to the movie, <laughs> the wings and 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 uh places that are not here. Uh like again, the performance of like where we talked to, I talked about the boat scene. That scene, while again, very visually stunning in my opinion. 
And I like that. It just ended, like, even though I have criticism with it, I did like how it just ended with no no resolution. We just kind of, again, leaves it open to the interpretation. And, and after I watched this movie, I went, I went on a deep dive on different people's analyzations of this movie because I was very curious of what other people thought of this. Because, again, very divisive movie. Which again, I could like, and I like about this one is that we're both pretty much on separate form, separate spectrums of, of opinion of this movie. And I don't know why I could do to it. I've tried it, I've thrown all my tricks to, to try to reel, reel you back in, but it's not worked. She, she's because she's we took a nap after this movie, that's why it was so bad. I had to go take a nap. Yeah, that's why. That's the other reason why I was like, oh, I want, I want to do it because I would like the reaction. Because it's like, it's like I think when we watched Batman, we had like two days, so you could kind of let it sink in. Who knows? Maybe after a few days, you may may end up liking it. <laughs> For example, I'll, I'll throw an example. It's it's uh, was it a twenty four? I can't. You know remember. what? Hold on. You said that you left the ending, left the the audience to, to their own interpretation of what happened, right? Yeah. You know who did a really good job of that? The Sopranos. That's that is how, true. That's how you leave an audience wondering what happened and start thinking for yourself. And I not, believe Tony got whacked. Not, not fucking sitting there on a boat, flipping the bitch over, and having this fucking hot ass mom going. Uh, it's just it's nothing about this movie is redeemable as far as the story goes. Great. Watch, I, I, great I won't say this though. Watch in 10 to 15 years, this movie's gonna get like the room type audience or some other type of audience where it's gonna be revered as a cult classic. No, I no. believe it will be. I, I I do believe that people are going to, even the people who didn't like like look at I'll, I'll throw an example out there. Like people, a lot of people look fondly over the prequels of Star Wars nowadays. They're all good. Huh? Wrong. They're all right. Like, I, you know, granted, I will say, after seeing The Rise of Skywalker, I appreciated the movie, the prequels more than I did. I'll give it that much. But I just love how people were like, oh, yeah, we like those movies now because these movies are off. Or even the Halloween movies. Halloween Ends, which actually one day I do want to discuss no, that. Maybe those were shit, too. But again... Oh, how dare you? I, 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 th- th- we're going to have to talk about the Halloween and the David Gordon Green Halloween show to one day. This is a standalone that no one is going to spend three hours watching again. That's just not. I did. You're special. You, <laughs> you have a love of film most don't. But see, okay. I, I couldn't stomach it again. I Agreed. You, her, and I, and yourself are people of, of genuine intelligence. I'd like to say that we're not stupid people, right? That we know dumb motherfuckers. We do. We know them. But even they would have walked out of this movie. The fact is, those movies that you're bringing up, like Halloween, like Star Wars, they're part of a, a longer canon. They're part of a beloved, true. beloved franchise as a standalone movie. This was shit. There's no redeeming quality. Okay, uh, you know, I know that you will look at cin- cinematography. You'll look at set design. You'll look at fucking camera work. You'll look at acting. And all those things are fine and dandy. If yeah, I was going to say, it, especially that 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 the the play scene. That was like, I know people, some people didn't like that. Was. That was a beautiful scene. But if we're looking at this movie for what it is, a movie with a story and characters, it was dog shit. Fine. I got a question because I, I was actually having a discussion with a few friends of mine. We were actually discussing this was probably when it first came out. We were discussing the idea if this would have worked better as a TV series due to it being as long as it was and plus maybe having more room to, even though, again, three hours is a long time for a movie, but again, just go with me on this. Have more time to kind of go go within the motion. Keep that frantic nature, which I liked about the movie, intact, but have more time to build. I'll put it this I way. I can see that. I, I can see it as like a bunch of 15-minute clips on Facebook. Like a, like a mini-series. doesn't even need to be a full, like a season-by-season season show. You could have him like 
diving into his day to day life and those people on the street. I mean, you could really dig in that. I could actually stop. if you could if you could actually do that. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, it, I should not leave a movie wondering more about what happened to the birthday boy stabber. What happened to him? Like, I'm more concerned about that. I'm more concerned about what happened to the fucking family with the paint drinking daughter. I'm more okay. concerned about what happened to the people in the play. I'm more concerned about that. I could give two fucks about Bo. Are you concerned about the giant penis monster? I don't what can ever. I just want to know if he fucked the guy in shackles. That's the only. Thing that I was his about. brother. <laughs> That was Bo. Did you see? It was basically Bo with hair. Yeah. But he, if you listen to him talk, he was talking about how there was two of him, basically, and that part of him that was strong asked the questions. He and was, what, what would his, his mom say? That wasn't a, that wasn't a dream. That was a memory. That was his brother. She says that, but after everything else in that movie, you think that that's actually a thing. Well, we saw his brother in shackles that looked just like him with longer hair. Do you really think there was a penis monster? Do you not think that was like a hallucination of some kind? Some sort of psychotic fucking episode? I think there was you really a... think she had someone chained for 40 years up in the fucking attic? And, and this is what's that. gonna make this movie have people talk about it for years. Was there really a penis monster? Can that... you die from fucking cowgirl position? I don't think so. I don't think all of that is true. And Rigor Mortis hasn't said in that fucking quick. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad that we're arguing over the penis monster and Rigor Mortis after five seconds of fucking. What have you done to this show? <laughs> Chayton, what the fuck have you done? Hey, hey, like like y'all started to cut like the, the banter between that. That was that I just kind of threw the uh threw the ball there. You just were fighting over it. We're fighting over the legitimacy of a cock monster. <laughs> Well, that is a legitimate debate right there. Like what like what did it fucking like you know, like how the how did it even produce and how did the woman even survive? Also, fun fact, the mom who the, the younger version, because there was two actresses who played the mom in the um in the movie. Yeah. In the young, I, look, we, I thought there was more something underlining, more serious. Like I thought his mom was molesting him. I thought because they were laying in the bed together as a, as when he was a little kid, and I thought, oh, yeah. I thought there was something to that. Wow, we're really going to touch on this subject like this. That's a powerful fucking sentiment to get into. And we only knew about the maid in the last five fucking minutes. Oh yeah, this, fucking oh my god, and this fucking really important character who was like, oh, I'll come back and tickle you, and he legitimately cared. You could feel the emotion between young Bo and the nanny and the maid, we who we never even fucking knew about. I was going to say the girl who played the younger version of both mom, uh, Zoe Lister Jones, was I fucking was, beautiful. Yeah, I was, I, I, when I was looking at her, I was like, where have I seen her from? And then I recalled she Four. was in this sitcom called Life in Pieces. Uh, she was actually in the show Married to Colin Hanks, uh, Tom Hanks' son. It was actually, it's a very good uh, little sitcom. Again, you're taking but, these characters and you're bringing up their past work. I, I want to bring up the, the stuff that they're, made, they're known for just because, again, I like to give give people who may not know who these people are because I, I didn't recognize her at first. But you, also, shouldn't, you shouldn't do that because if they see that they did this movie, they're never getting work again. She also did the Craft Legacy. She do, she has she actually a director as well. She directed the Craft Legacy, so that's one downside to her career. We should see. The, we should remove re, 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 review the movie The Craft. That's a good one too. Oh yes, just don't touch the Craft Legacy. No. The only thing good about that movie is David Duchovny, but David Duchovny is good. Ever since I saw like y'all loved him from the X Files. I didn't see X Files so later. I saw him in Californication. That was my. He was my, a whore. Yes, yes, I, like. I, I've spe- which reminds me another movie, Cruel Intentions, because that's a movie that kind of beautiful, beautiful movie. Yeah, but yes, yes, Californication. That, that's why David Duchovny's character was my spirit animal in that movie or in that show. Anyway, yeah. Cruel Intentions. And I did not need to see Bo's gigantic balls that were backed up with forty years worth of semen because he was afraid to come. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> 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 I, I, I'm sorry. I love Joaquin Phoenix, but like again, talking about small points in the movie where I wanted to laugh my ass off with something that should have been more serious. 
him naked wrestling with an intruder in a bathtub. Oh, yes, that was hilarious. I saw more of Joaquin Phoenix's ass than I needed to see today. I was like, I was like, that, that scene was good. Speaking of which, like, I know, I know we keep going off to different movies. Have you ever seen the movie The Master with Joaquin and uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman? I have not. Watch that one. That's really good. And and just don't don't look at Bo's Afraid as my only recommendation. So <laughs> don't win. ain't like that. But that's a really good movie. It's kind of like Philip Seymour Hoffman's running a cult, basically. Best way I can describe it without giving too much away. If you wanted to kill a cult, this is how you be we can watch this movie. <laughs> this can't be like like wait till you see Way to Poop Blood and Honey. Then then tell me if it if the, if this is the worst movie of the year. Trying to think of any other movies I that, that were awful this year. And man, was Quantum I hated. I love Quantum Manium. Oh, screw you. <laughs> that was a good movie. John the Major was great, but yeah, other Modoc was amazing. See, I know that one got divisive the end. I liked it. I liked the difference of, of what what like what Modoc was. He's got been a while. Yeah, so that 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 another divisive scene I actually preferred. So there were there were redeeming things, but I still hated the movie. But it was a movie with a beginning, middle, and end, and fucking redemption, and it was a wonderful fucking play of characters, a father and daughter coming together, all these wonderful little things with some comedy thrown in and Modoc. And it was great. This, as I will say again, was dog shit. And 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 aren't you and aren't like I said, it was it was my favorite movie of the year until until uh, Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning. I'm I again, I like the uniqueness of it. it. It's a movie. I'll say it like this: It's a movie that we probably will ne have never seen before in this aspect, and we probably never will see again because, again, due to the box office and the device. <laughs> such good thing. Like, uh, um, I'm hoping that Ari, because they're really high on him as a director, I'm hoping this doesn't sour anybody's uh, in A24 with him because he's I, a. I, you know what? If he could produce something better, I would say this is a fucking strike and say, you fucked up here. You got one more shot to show us something better. Have you, have you seen Hereditary Midsommar? No. Well, check those out, especially Hereditary. Tony Collette should have gotten a damn Oscar. She wasn't even nominated. But yeah, those two, those like very different than this movie. So don't go into this movie like like it, it would be the reverse with me because I I went in this already having high expectations for. So did I. Here's the problem, and here's what you fucked me on. Here's the biggest issue I have with you. I love your critiques of movies. You and I were probably more, and this is going to be a rarity because we you and I have a similar mindset as far as movies. I think. You built this up, and I have been putting it off for a moment that I could actually enjoy it. We were going to watch it last night, but I was too fucking tired after work. So oh, like, yeah. you, know, oh, you worked yesterday? I didn't know. That's all. Okay. Like, 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 yesterday, yesterday, yesterday morning. I got off in the morning. Oh, okay. So, so I was like, you know, I was sitting there playing Binding of Isaac, which is another fucked up story, but we'll, that's another time to replace. Um, was what was did that? We I said, you know what? Tomorrow we have all day, got nothing to do. We're going to sit down and watch this movie. So we did. And I sat here looking and waiting for that Charlie stamp of approval, that fucking Chayton fucking, this is going to be one of those movies that was going to touch me. Like the like movies like, like Gladiator, like Braveheart, like, like fucking Saving Private Ryan. I was seeing someone like fucking Joaquin Phoenix who kills it and everything he does. And I got this. It did and, touch you all right, but in the wrong way. And I'm literally saying a movie that had beautiful sexy naked ass a young mom that was really you know because I, I kind of like moms <laughs> and, oh, yeah, all. and giant penis monster and not one positive thing i can say about all these different things that i like not one throw them all together nothing i got nothing Well, for once, I, I apologize for your experience, but but again, it has been entertaining, no pun intended, to hear hear your uh, your uh, banter about it and the back and forth of trips. That was the only uh, reason I can enjoy doing this this discussion on this is because I have a snow cone. 
probably be like, I wish I could trade this with bourbon or pour bourbon in my snow cone. That actually brings you a good, that actually brings up a good question. I wonder if, it, if, 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 cause again, they call it like, I, like I could see people calling this an acid trip. I wonder if it, wonder you got if, the wrong acid. I would fight your drug dealer if this was the kind of acid they're giving you. No, I'm wondering because I would like. I wonder, wonder if you like I smoke pot or something while watching it. How how it would affect everything? I have to try that one day. Maybe don't give me excuses. We we watch it for a third time. Fall asleep. Fall asleep. Sense. I don't know much more we can say about the movie, so I think we should go into our ratings. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll start with you. I grade things in one through five, right? I use the old Dave Meltzer scoring strategy, the scoring numbers. For the story and everything else, it was shit. I don't what fucking recommend watching this motherfucking movie. I think that you would have a better time fucking clipping toenails or doing your own fucking personal vasectomy. Um, because I can't go below one. And because the acting, at least, was damn good, because you can expect no less from someone like Joaquin Phoenix and the other cast of characters, I give it the lowest fucking one I can give this fucking movie. I don't suggest anybody ever waste your time three hours watching it. I don't see the beauty in the art of the story. And this is coming from a guy who thought if you would have said fine ass and giant penis monster, I never thought I'd say this about a movie like that. But no, I would not recommend this to anybody. And I couldn't even because I, I was like I was like I want I want to tell him tell him something about it. But I'm like no no I need him I need his reaction when he sees it because yeah. I was like what so there were times where I was like I was like I was like I can't wait to hear your reaction to this movie because again you, did. you said that and I I want to punch you in the throat well because I I was like I was like either you're gonna love it or you're going to hate it with a passion so I I knew I knew basically what I was getting from either way. I knew there was probably going to be no middle in it, except for the acting, of course. So I would love to hear your fucking rating of this movie. Well, I'm going to give it the, the same rating that uh, Dave Meltzer gave Kenny Omega and Okada. Seven snuff. <laughs> no, no, but as far as like what I think about it, and this is going to be probably the, the furthest we're ever going to be in terms of ratings. We've been semi-close for the most part with most of our ratings as we've done in the past. But as someone who, who loved, loved the story due to it being so frantic and, and it being an anxiety trip and fucking just batshit crazy, and you didn't know what was going to happen next, uh, which I appreciate because, again, I walked into this thinking, look, looking at it from his previous films to now and not basically not knowing what the fuck was going to happen next scene after, after, I, after the penis scene. I was like, hold on, before you say that. Can you rate this on not knowing the director? Yeah, I, I was just using that as an example from my experience from him. Could you rate this movie without knowing his past work? If this was something that was just a brand new movie, brand new director, straight out of film school, you know what I've been saying? Leon is doing his own fucking art. He's doing film school and all that. If Leon Calavera made this movie, I would still probably give it the same rating because of the fact that, again, what I liked about it, the biggest thing I liked about it was that it was different. It was something that was not like that, again, I've never seen before, probably will never see again because of how just, again, with the the budget and everything else that this movie was, again, being a basically an anxiety-fueled fever dream, I would still rate it the same with and, and with the performances and again with the cinematography, the score, the set design, especially in the in the uh, play scene, and of course the third act. Like I like the the house and the of course the set design for the penis monster. Like again, that's there's gonna be main <laughs> jokes. There's gonna be main jokes about that. But again, when I saw that, I was like, I was like, what the fuck. I just again with the anxiety, you didn't know what to expect with this movie, with where it was gonna go I'll next. I agree with that. I didn't know that I was gonna get fucking yeah. kung fu commando Cletus versus a penis monster. And then fucking the scene with when Parker Posey and all that. I, I like when that scene was starting, I was like, okay, your your typical scene. Now I was like, then after a few minutes, I was like, what the fuck? 
That was like, to me, that was like when the third act really kicked into high gear for me. I was like, okay, this is, this is getting, this is getting good because I don't know what the fuck is going to happen next. And I'm loving it. I, one thing I hate about movies, and I'll, I'll say this before I get my old final rating. I hate about a lot of movies nowadays and even, even in the past is that you have your, 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 as we talked about your third act, your first, th second, third acts, you have your idea of where you're going. Even, even, even if, um, again, you're who done, it's all that. There are times where you can figure out who the killer is and all that. Or um, you have your your arcs where, okay, you're going through this story. Okay, there's gonna be a sad moment. Like let's say it's a group of people. You have your sad moment where they go separate. Like comedies, for example, group comedies. They have their sad moment where they separate for a little bit and then they re reunite and everything's good at the end. It's the clear. Like I, everything like a lot of cinema especially mainstream cinema is so cliche and so run of the mill and what i liked about this movie was that it was so out of the ordinary out of the box basically outside the box and just frantic and that you didn't know what was going to happen scene to scene and i love that because not a lot of films do that anymore where you're where you have the, that un just a consistency of unexpected stuff going on. And that, that's the main thing I loved about this movie was that it was, it, it basically, in my opinion, it said, fuck you to all, all the, the tropes of, of a lot of movies and just did its own thing. I'm legitimately curious. So do you think his mother perpetrated everything? Do you think all the people that worked for her, that all of this, what she was in control of, was uh, delaying a plant? Were those people, Did she, do you think that she controlled everything? Not that he didn't have mental illness, not that she didn't fake her death as a way of manipulation, but do you think she controlled every aspect of his life like that? I believe so. You think I believe that. She was a nasty-ass building, so she was a slumlord, and he lived there, and she knew the conditions he was living in? Yeah, I believe she. I believe she basically had control of him from the day he was born. But do you think she let him live on Skid Row, or does that, or is that part of his mental illness manifestation as to what he perceived that place looked like? Because she was obsessed with safety. She thought everything was keeping him safe. So I believe that was his mindset because of the fact that that, like she that they, she wanted him to be with him at all times. She was so possessive of him. So she planted the birthday stabber. Yeah. But she watched it also. Elaine was a plant. Yeah, because like look at it from this point of view. He he was give her or give or take, he was given excuses why he can't go see her. He was losing stuff and all that. So then we had the person on the ceiling basically to get him out of the house and then led to the get hit get, getting hit by the car. And then going on, basically, that was the beginning of his adventure, if you will. So was the tattoo guy symbolic, or was he really there? I believe he was symbolic. But then how did the lawyer use him again as a beggar to prove that he was a bad son? That's a good point. Ha! Rate the movie. Rate I, I still will give it a uh, five out of five. Oh I, God! Oh, I threw my threw my mouth a little bit. Even after I gave that good great speech at the end, it, <laughs> nothing. That was, that was a great speech. I got like you can't deny that my 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 opinion of why I love this movie so much. He sold it to you. He so I'm not watching. I got some beachfront property in Arizona. We can... <laughs> he did a good job. Thank you. You're welcome. Blech. <laughs> <coughs> but anyway, guys, that has been, of course, Exile or Tampa, probably the most uh, interesting and divisive one we've done yet. And uh, we will be back, I believe, in two weeks to discuss another thing. We, we will, I'll be uh, letting people know probably very soon what that movie or what that movie or whatever we decide will be. So with that, and of course, check out Exile Outcast every Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, unless we decide not to do an episode for one week. That's me banging my head on the microphone because this is such a stupid fucking movie. <laughs>
But uh, I, I am, I am, uh, of course, uh, the Bo's Afraid uh, defender, Chayton. I'm just Dan, a normal guy who likes normal fucking movies. Not even a little bit of, P- of giant PS monster. <laughs> Close the show out, Jaden. Well, we got we will have to have an in depth conversation in person about the giant PS monster and how how that could be, how that could possibly be a thing. Anyway, with that being said, y'all take care and ta ta for now.